Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon everybody. Thank you for joining me today in another interesting engineering series that brought to you by Faculty of Engineering Multimedia University. So today we're going to learn about mobile phone and you. So before that, let me share my screen so that everybody will be able to see what this talk is about. Right. My name is uh, Prof. Dr. Muhammad Yusuf Alias from the uh, Faculty of Engineering Multimedia University. My area of expertise is in wireless communication, so that's why I'm giving this talk to you, mobile phone and you. I'm sure you are aware about mobile phone. You can see mobile phone everywhere, right? Uh, everybody is using mobile phone these days. Um, People are using mobile phone at home. People are using while well, they are on the train, um, in their offices, uh, walking around, talking, and then even on the public transport, almost everywhere. People are always in touch, uh, never out of touch. Yeah? So mobile phones is something that has become an essential part of our life. Uh, we can never live without it, right? Um, so. 20 years ago, it is not this way, right? Uh, people have started to gain um, a lot of interest in cell phones and or mobile phones, we call it. And then um, it has become an essential part of our life. We deal uh, with mobile phone from the day that we uh, woke up in the morning. Uh, we use mobile phone as our alarm clock. We use our mobile phone as our radio. We use mobile phone as our TV. We watch videos and so on. People are using mobile phones for all sorts of things every day. Uh, the term mobile phones itself means mobile. Mobile means uh, moving around so that you can go around, you can walk around, you can not attach to anything. So that's the term mobile. In some countries, it is also called, uh, it is not just named as mobile, it's also called cell phones. Uh, for example, in the US, they call it cell phones. Uh, we will talk about that later, the reason why it is called cell phones. In places like Japan, for example, they call it handy phones because it is handy, right? So they call it handy phones. So different places may call it differently, but the terms itself or the item itself is almost the same. The function is almost the same. We can see that uh, mobile phones, as I mentioned, has become uh, a very essential part of our life, right? So mobile phone, um, as we know it, right, the number of mobile phones is a lot. So if you look at these statistics that I'm showing to you, uh, based on the uh, results that is given by the International Telecommunication Union, you can see the mobile phones, the number of mobile phones has been rising uh, since 2001 up to 2020. So, in to, compared to a fixed telephone line where a lot of people have been uh, stopping to use fixed telephone line or a fixed broadband subscription is much, much lower, you can see that the number of mobile telephone, cellular telephone subscription has always been in the rise. In fact, there are about 8.152 billion subscriptions at the end of 2020. And you know what? the total population of the whole earth is only 7.674 billion. So that means there are more mobile phones compared to the, everyone on the planet. So the number of phones actually exceed the number of um, the earth population. Right? Even in Malaysia alone, according to MCMC, based on their report at the end of 2020, Malaysians alone, have about 43.6 million subscribers to mobile services. And most of them are prepaid subscriptions, including probably some of you um, are using prepaid telephone subscriptions. And the rest, about 31%, is using postpaid subscriptions. And this by far actually exceed the total population of Malaysia, which is only about 31.95 million. Um, 
throughout the whole Malaysia by the end of 2019. So you can see that there are more phones than uh, the, the number of total population of Malaysia. How can this happen? Well, basically, you know, like most people or some people actually have more than one phones with them or they own more than one phone. So that's why the number of mobile phones actually exceed the number of um, the, the human population in this country. So since you know, you've seen mobile phones around um, and you have heard mobile phone, you have been using mobile phone, but do you really know how your mobile phone works? Right? Most people would know, oh, okay, I can make calls, I can use it for data, I can access a lot of things through mobile phone. But do we really know how it works? So this is the talk that is going to explain to you some basic ideas of mobile phones and how it actually works. Before we go into more details of how the working of mobile phone is, let's look a little bit of history. Uh, I know most people don't like to listen to history lesson, but it is important to know where the origin is coming from, where the phones is coming from. Um, based on storybooks, I'm sure you have read about history books, or you can just Google, you know, the first phone was created or patented by Alexander Graham Bell in 1876. So it's more than 150 years ago. So since then, yeah, uh, back then in 1876, when Alexander Graham Bell started to demonstrate his uh, fixed phone, uh, people were laughing at him saying that, oh, well, why do you even want to talk into a machine? Um, why do you even want to actually um, use a device to talk to your friend when you can actually go to your friend and talk to them? Because at the beginning, the phone line was just a, a few meters distance. But look at how the evolution of telephone has become during this 150 years. So the, the, it has evolved from the fixed line, right? Uh, you have seen that how in the uh, 1870s phone looked like, and then it, it goes into the 1880s, um, 1890s started to become into cradles in the 19 uh, in the early 1900s, and then become this type of phones where you have a dial, right? Um, in the 1914s, for example, and 1920s, and then in the 1970s it become a touch pen, and then in the 1990s, it became cordless phones. So this is the evolution of um, the fixed line phone, the one that is connected to your home. But even this, you can see that the phone has started to move from being very big to start to become smaller. Last time, it used to use a dial where you have to turn the numbers in order to call your friends or call any other numbers, and it become a touchpad where you just need to touch the numbers. And then later on, it started to become cordless phone, where cordless means you don't have a cord or a wire connected to it, but still, this type of phone line, uh, this type of phone line is still connected to the home fixed line, right? So for many years, this phone has been using the landline. So whenever you need to talk, you have to actually go home or stay in a building where you cannot really take that phone around with you in your car. Or if you go somewhere else, you cannot take that numbers. You cannot take the phone with you. People cannot call you at all. So that's when researchers were saying, oh, well, why not we come up with something that is totally mobile? That means you can simply take this phone and go somewhere else and use it. So that's the idea where mobile phone comes in because they don't want to be bound by the physical wire, by the cable that is connected to the phone and you can easily travel anywhere that you want to go while people can still keep in touch with you, right? So uh, that is where people started to create mobile phones, right? So the first mobile phone uh, based on history Actually, the first mobile phone was uh, created back in the year 1908. Uh, that was the first year that the U a US patent was issued in Kentucky for a wireless telephone. 
But during that time, it still has not become a public usage and people are still working on it after the World War and so on. During World War II, the military during that time has already started using radio signals to actually transmit. For example, they have walkie-talkies. Uh, they can transmit between aeroplanes to the earth station, between um, uh, 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 tanks, for example, or those that are in the military field. They can contact their base using radio signals. So back in the 1940s, uh, most of these mobile or radio signals were created mostly for the military purposes and is not for public usage. Not until the year about 1970, a company in the US called AT&T has started to develop mobile phone based on cellulars and base stations. What are cellulars and base stations? I will talk about that in a short while. Right? But after that 1970s year, that's when the development becomes more rapid and as we know electronics become more important uh, much smaller and more significant so the very first mobile phone uh, was really started in the us back in the early 1980s so you probably have heard about 4g or 5g right so that g that g in the 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 4G and 5G or 3G, 4G and 5G represents generations, the generations of the evolution of mobile phone. So the first generation of mobile phones started in the year 1980. And this first generation is called 1G. It's using analog communication and it is not as what we see it today. The size of the phone itself, although it's uh, termed as mobile, the size of the phone itself is almost the size of a CPU, or you can look at it like a luggage bag, you know, that is quite big and bulky, which is not really something that you can put in your pocket or you can carry in your handbag to go anywhere that you want to go. So the first generation mobile was really mobile when they are inside uh, automobiles, like for example, they are put in the cars, um, they are they are located in the cars. They, they are not really for traveling purposes. So, but that is the starting point of uh, mobile phone as we know it is. So um, then, in uh, the year nineteen nineties, that's when after when there are more um, evolutions towards, uh, for example, the uh, digital services. The mobile phone also moved from analog to become digitized. So the second generation phone is totally different compared to the first generation phone because rather than using analog where it's bulky and it's not really, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, something that you portable. So it becomes smaller and it becomes much better in terms of quality because it's digitized. Um, and in digital, the good thing about digital, there are so many things that you can do in digital system. The circuits become smaller, the battery lifetime becomes longer, so the battery itself becomes smaller, and uh, the quality of service was even better. But the first generation and the second generation phone are mostly for voice because at that time, internet is still not popular. So that's why the first generation the original idea of a mobile phone is mainly for voice transmission. That's where people use it to call other people. The, during the 1990s, in the mid-1990s, I think that's when you, most of you were born or maybe some of you were you know, uh, not even born. That's where internet started to boom and a lot of people are using the internet. Right? So mobile industry also were affected by this um, internet booming when data becomes popular. So mobile phones are no longer used for voices. So that's why mobile phone needs to evolve and to include data, not just voices. So that's where the third generation comes in and in the early 2000s, where the main um, sources for this a uh, mobile phone is no longer voices, but it carry both voice and data. But 
the 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 data rate uh, the amount of data at that time was still small uh, there was no whatsapp there is no uh, facebook um, on on phones there is no youtube there is no streaming for example so the requirement for the data is very small but another enhancement came in in uh, mid of 2000 where apple started to introduce smartphones uh, google started to in introduce android phone so the demand for data rate the amount of bandwidth that is required for mobile also increases back in the early, uh, mid of 2000s so that's where you started to have youtube on phones you started to have whatsapp you started to have facebook etc um, although there's no no TikTok or PUBG at that time yet, but people already started to request or, or have a high demand for data. So that's where the fourth generation comes in and say, oh, okay, now voice is no longer the main uh, problem, no longer the main demand. Everybody wants a higher data rate. Now you want a faster YouTube. You want a faster streaming of videos uh, like what we are doing now. I think some of you are even watching on your mobile phone. You require to have a good data uh, connection. So that's where 4G comes in because of the evolution of smartphones. And now people are talking about 5G where data is no longer about 1 gigabit per second. People are talking about 10 gigabits per second. In split second, you get everything that you want. So the requirement is much higher and much deeper. People are looking for much higher data rate. And in the future for it, they are looking at Internet of Things. They are looking at, at autonomous cars. They are looking at, at uh, so all sorts of, of higher demand for mobile connection. So that is where the 5G is coming and you will see 5G in the next few years. It's already started, 5G is already started uh, in some countries. In Malaysia, for example, they've already done the testing, they've already done the demonstration. So you can even buy 5G phones, you can go to the shops now, you can ask for 5G phones like Redmi 5G or, or Vivo 5G or even Samsung 5G, although there is no 5G services yet in the country. But it will happen, in the next few years, definitely 5G will start to replace. Even in Malaysia, for example, this year and over next year, there will be what is called the dawn of 3G. That means, uh, that, uh, that means the, the setting down of 3G. 3G will be uh, phased out, so there will be no longer 3G in Malaysia. Everybody have to use either 4G or 5G in the future. So that's where the future is coming for mobile phone. So you will see even in researchers, research like myself and other researchers, we are already working on 6G, even though 5G is not out yet. So that's how fast the development is in mobile technology. And if you look at the history itself, it, the changes is about every 10 years. So you can expect 6G would probably come out somewhere around the 2030s. Yeah? So how does it work? Yeah? If you compare to the phone line that we have at home, although the cellular phone works almost very similar to your landline phone, the fixed phone that you have at home, um, actually is a little bit different because in the fixed phone, your fixed phone will be connected with cables to the uh, what is called the sockets on your wall and then later on it will be connected to the you see all those uh, poles uh, the roadside yeah the, that those are the poles for your fixed line phones nowadays it's more famous for uh, broadband services like unify fibers and so on to come to your house those were used for fixed line phones in the old days but in a cellular phone or in mobile phone what is used is instead of using cables it is using radio signals to transmit data from your phone to what is called the base station you probably have noticed all this uh, those tall towers uh, at the roadside if you drive through the highway for example you will see a lot of these tall towers on the roadside or if you, even in housing areas, you will see that those tall towers is called base stations. Uh, 
um, in cities, in big cities, for example, you can see these towers or these base stations on top of tall buildings. Even in KL, uh, on top of KL Tower, there is already the pole that is used for as base stations. Although the landlines and the cellular phones or the mo mobile phones are used in the same way, so the basic of mobile, you can imagine something similar like a walkie-talkie, where it's using radio signals. So this radio, when you talk to your phone, there is a microphone in, uh, we're talking about voice now. Yeah? So in mobile phone, there are two services. As mentioned in the previous slide, when we were talking about the generations, it started with voice, and then later on, you have voice and data. And now what happened in the 4G and beyond is no longer uh, the circuit switch, but everything is converted into what is called packet switch. Even your voice is also using packets in the future. And this is called voice over LTE, VOLTE, or in 5G, they have 5G LTE, right? So uh, the, the one that will be carrying the voices or the one that will be carrying the data is called radio signals. And these radio signals will beam using electromagnetic wave. So it, regardless whether you are sitting down, whether you are walking, whether you are driving, or whether you are on train, these electromagnetic waves will be radiating from your phone to the nearest base stations. And the base station, in order to receive it, the base stations will also beam down the signals to your phone. So each of these base stations will be located in what is called a cellular. So we will talk about cellular later on. Right? So in general, the mobile phone system can be divided into three main subsystems. At the end user, like us, like the subscriber point, right, we have the handphone. This is called the subscriber substation. And then at the service provider, like your telcos, like Cellcom, Maxis, uh, Unify Mobile, DG, etc., they are the service providers or the telco companies. They have their base station transceivers. And each of these base stations will be connected to a mobile network operator. So there is a mobile switching center or the mobile network operator center. This is where the call or whatever data that is coming from your phone will be processed. So for example, if you are trying to call another mobile line or another fixed line, your call will go to the base station. The base station will direct the signals to the mobile switching center, or we, uh, it is called MSC, or the mobile network operator. And from there, if it is a voice call, it will be redirected to the public switching telephone line. But if it is data, for example, if you're searching the web, or if you're typing using WhatsApp and so on, it will go into the internet. It will go into the public internet network. So this is how the connection comes from your phone to the switching center, right? So how many switching centers are there? It depends on your telco. Probably in the whole country, it may only have three or four mobile switching centers throughout the whole country. But you will see that you have a lot of base stations around you. So let's look at the first part of this mobile phone subsystem which is the subscriber unit. This is where you are. You and myself are part of the subscriber unit. So the mobile phone subscriber unit can be divided into two parts. One is the unit itself, the phone that you have, right? the phone that you use. And another part, which most of you probably have not seen or may have seen during the registration of your phone, which is called the SIM card. So these two units are separate. They are not connected together. They are not one. So that's why you can buy phone without a SIM card, or you can have a SIM card and choose another phone later on. Right? The good thing about having a, a separate mobile unit and the SIM card itself is that 
if you want to change phone, you don't need to change your number. You don't need to change your SIM card. So the phone itself is an independent unit compared to the SIM card. So SIM card is an evolution of mobile technology that comes after the second generation. So you can imagine the SIM card just like your identity card, just like your my card or my kit, right? So this is the one that carries your identity, the one that carry your phone number. Actually, you can't find your phone number in the SIM card because each SIM card has its own unique number. So the SIM card number itself is also unique to the user, is also unique to the country that you are using, and is also unique to the network or the companies that you are subscribed to. So that's why if you go and purchase a SIM card, you will notice that the SIM card is different for each service provider. So if you use a SIM card for Maxis, it's different compared to a SIM card for uh, Cellcom, a different SIM card to Unify Mobile and so on. So every SIM card is unique. So it's a unique number. There is each of the SIM card will store a secure number which is called the sim number uh, or the imsi number right um, so this ism uh, imsi number there is a 15 digits number with the country code that means every country in the world has its own code there is a network code and there is also the mobile station identification number right so sim card has also evolved so you see that everybody is evolved the mobile phone has evolved from the 1970s. Uh, the SIM card has evolved. Even the telephone that we are using has also evolved, right? From the big telephone to started to become small. And now it started to grow again because people want to have a larger screen, right? So you can see the SIM card used to be a normal, like a credit card size um, value where you can break it down into a smaller mini SIM. So mini SIM was the one that was used earlier on in the second generation and third generation. Then it started to evolve into micro SIM, nano SIM, and now you even have eSIM, which is actually built in into some of the phones. So the, even the SIM card itself has also evolved. Now everybody has to evolve. You and I also have to evolve. That means we also have to change. If the technology can change, why not us? Right? So when you actually insert the SIM card into the phone, when you put the SIM card into the phone, that is where now your identity has been transferred into the phone itself. So the phone will carry your identity. Actually, your identity is inside the SIM card. So that's why when you change phone, you can just take your SIM card out and then put it into another phone and then that phone will now become yours. Yeah? So your identity is unique to the SIM card. So what happened when you lose your SIM card? That's where you can report to the company because your SIM card, your identity is already registered with the service provider. When you first register your phone, actually they register your SIM card and link it to the phone number. That's why I say earlier, your SIM card doesn't contain your number. It has its own unique number and then later on, it is linked to your phone number. So when you lose your SIM card, you can actually make a report saying, hey, I lost my SIM card. Can you cancel that SIM card? Yes, they can. They can remove that SIM number, link to that number. When you register a new SIM card, they will just link the new SIM card to your existing number. So you can still have your number, but with a totally new SIM card link to you that is almost the same as having a new phone as well. Okay, so earlier on, I was saying about cellulars. Remember that each user, right? For example, um, the cars represent the devices or the phones because as I mentioned in the first generation, uh, when we talk about mobile phone, it's actually inside a car, inside an automobile. So that's why they call it mobile phones, right? So each mobile phone will be connected to the base station and each base station will have a coverage area. So you can imagine because this is radio signals and radio signals has a limitations in terms of the distance that they can travel, right? Um, you can imagine this like your voice. Um, how far can you shout? You cannot shout 
100 meters. You cannot shout 200 meters. So the louder you shout, the longer the distance that that shout, uh, other people will be able to hear your voice. Similarly, radio signals will depend on the amount of power that is transmitted from the base stations. The smaller the power that is transmitted, the shorter the distance that you can travel. And this distance will represent the area or the cells that we're talking about. Right? So the shape of the cells, yeah, the, the reason why they call it cells, because it looks like individual cells. So these are different base stations and different cells. Right? So that's why in the United States, they call it cellular phone. Right? Of course, we are adopting British term where we call it mobile phone. Right? So it is almost it is actually the exact same thing. They work the exact same way. Uh, it's normal that everybody wants to use their own term because they think that their term is much cooler. Right? So regardless of whether you call it cellular phone or mobile phone, it's referring to the exact same thing. So each of these cells are having its own frequency. Right? There is more to that if you want to study cellular phones and it's working, then you probably have to go for your degree in Bachelor in Telecommunication because we have one subject for the whole semester alone studying about mobile and satellite communication. So to put that into one hour, definitely it is not enough. Right? It's enough to know that each of these cell is connected to the base station. So what happened when you move from one cell to another cell, right? So there is a process called handover or handoff. So you see that each of these base stations are actually connected to the mobile switching center or the mobile station controller, we call it MSC. So when you move from one cell to another cell, it is handing over your frequency from one base station you are being transferred to another base station. At the user point of view, people like us, for example, do you notice that when you are driving or when you are inside a car, you will see that your connection is almost seamless. That means you don't even notice that there is any changing in terms of the cells, in terms of any changing of the radio signals, etc. Because the process is so smooth that for the end user, you don't even notice it. Most of the cells are overlapping with each other. So the process of handing over from one cell to another cell is so smooth that you don't notice it. Uh, so this is part of the quality of service that is provided by the end user. Try, for example, driving to an area that is uh, the, the distance between the base stations are very far. For example, if you try and drive through a, um, like a deep jungle or uh, through a forest area, for example, if you go through, um, let's see, uh, what example can I give? Through a tunnel, for example. But when you go into the tunnel, you will notice that there is no signal. Your signal is lost. But when you come out from the tunnel, you will get the signals again. This is an example where there is no smooth handover because the signals were not able to go inside the tunnels. Right? So there is no smooth handover. So the handover will only happen once you are connected to the other base stations. So handover is unique for mobile cellular. And with this handover process, it will be able to cover the whole country with just a set of limited spectrum frequency. And this is another factor that can be used in cellular where they call it frequency reuse factor, that the frequency can be reused again, again, and again without having any problems, right? So this is the basic concept of cellular. One more important aspect of the cellular that you will also notice, uh, okay, before that, how do you actually make a call uh, from a cellular phone, right? So when you dial up your phone, when you switch on your phone and you try to dial up to another number, it is not as if the other number, even if your other number is next to you, right? 
it doesn't mean that the phone actually directly connected to this new device or the, the neighboring next to you. So even if you are standing next to each other, it still need to go through all the way to the mobile switching center where this mobile switching center will go back to you, right? So when you make a phone call, let's say from A to B, so when you pick up your phone, uh, the phone will try to connect to the base station and from that base station, it will connect to the switching center and that switching center will try to find where the number that you have called and then it will go to the base station that is connected to the number that you called and then from there, it will link to the other user. So the radio part is only during the one that you call from the user to the base station and from the base station to the user. Other than that, it will be able, using like, for example, microwave, satellite, it can be using fiber optics as the backhaul that carry the background uh, signals throughout the call. Another uh, important aspect of the cellular technology or the mobile technology that is out there is that you will notice that you can actually carry your phone not just within the country, but you can even go outside of the country. For example, let's say I want to travel. Of course, nowadays you cannot travel anywhere due to the lockdown, due to the uh, pandemic and so on. You cannot travel overseas. But if you go to another country, for example, let's say um, I go to Korea because uh, I want to watch uh, BTS, right? So if I want to go to a new country, I can still use the same phone, the same SIM card in that country, even though I'm not registered in that country. So how does it possible? How is it possible to do such thing? There is a technique in mobile technology, which is called roaming. Probably you have heard of this, or if you have traveled overseas, or if you uh, have gone to another country, you probably have heard of this. For example, you use the service company A, like uh, in, in Malaysia, let's say under Telecom Malaysia, you use Unify Mobile in Malaysia. But if you go to, the, um, to Korea, for example, there is no such thing as Unify Mobile because Unify Mobile does not operate in Korea. So what happened is that you will actually link to a company that is inside that country. Any of the companies in Korea, for example, Korea Telecom or SK Telecom, for example, right? So once you connect it to the company, that company may have an agreement with your home company. So the home operator is Unify Mobile. When you go to the other company, uh, country, it will be SK Telecom. So there is an, an agreement with SK Telecom saying, oh, okay, any Unify Mobile can use my network. So it becomes what is called roaming. So roaming is unique and roaming is very specific for cellular and it has actually helped a lot because it eased people to travel from one place to another using these services. So what's inside your mobile phone? If you uh, have an old telephone, for example, um, or, or if your parents have an old unused telephone, you can try and look, uh, try and play around with it. That's what engineers do. Uh, we do a reverse engineering, we call it, where we can play around with an old uh, devices or an old equipment and we start operating with it. Right? So if you open up your phones, there are, or don't open the new ones, <laughs> yeah? um, or else your parents will be mad at me. Um, you, if you take an old phone, an unused phone, for example, if you break it down, there are a few main components inside your phone. Right? Of course, we already talked about SIM card. Right? Uh, there is a speaker where you can listen to what is coming out. So for example, um, people are calling you, you can hear what people are saying. There is definitely a microphone for you to talk into the, uh, into the phone, but there is also other components like microprocessor. So phone nowadays work almost like your computer. So it has a processor unit inside the phones itself. Of course, I'm not going to break this phone and show to you, right? Uh, this is very valuable to me at the moment, okay? So inside your phone, there is a microprocessor similar to what you have in your computer, right? So this processor, it works exactly like your computer. 
And of course, because it works like a computer, uh, you definitely have a screen, right? There are so many technologies for the screen nowadays, and most phones actually come with a touch screen. In the old days, the screen itself is not really touch screen. So you have keypads, for example, to dial um, the numbers. Yeah? Yeah, these are the example of keypads. For example, if you have the old Nokia 3310, there is a keypad number where it's limited. It's only one to nine plus zero and then hash and star uh, button there. So it's limited. But with the advancement of technology, you already have the touch screen, right? Where you don't need the keypad anymore. You don't need the touchpad anymore. Right? Everything is, is touch screen. Even the touch screen technology, the screen technology has also evolved from LCD to LED to OLED. There are so many LEDs out there, right? So there are many different types of technology they use for the screen. And inside, as similar to your, your um, computers, there will also be flash memory. Uh, there is a RAM and there is also ROM. ROM is where you have the memory inside the, 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 the uh, processor or the one that will be using as storage. Right? And RAM is the one that is going to do the ongoing process, processing or real-time processing. So if you go and uh, find your phones, right? if you go and search for your phone, definitely you will notice that at the box, it will say, uh, what is the size of your phone? What is the RAM? Uh, RAM size? What is the ROM size? Yeah? So that's why phones are not created equal. Uh, not all phones are equal. You may find a very cheap phones, like uh, nowadays you can find like 100 ringgit or 200 ringgit of phones. But if you notice the memory, if you notice um, the first thing that you will notice that the RAMs and the ROMs, right? So for example, the RAM can be uh, like 128 gig is, is normal now. Um, if you go, go and buy cheaper one, probably it's only about, uh, sorry, I'm talking about ROM, um, about 32 gig, the storage, uh, built-in storage, um, 32 gig or 64 gig or 128 gig. The bigger the size of the ROM, the more expensive it is, right? What does this ROM means? Meaning it's the number of files that you can save or the number of apps that you can install inside your phone. The bigger it is, the more videos that you can take, the more pictures that you can take. And then the other one is RAM. RAM is random access memory, right? It's where it's actually a real-time or an ad hoc memory where it's talking about the processing power. The, similar to ROM, RAM also, the, the bigger the RAM, the better it is. Nowadays, you will notice that a lot of the phones have about 4 gigabits of RAM or 8 gigabits of RAM or even 16 gigabits of RAM. Um, the cheaper ones you will find is about 2 gigabits of RAM or 3 gigabits of RAM. So what does this different RAMs mean? The higher the RAMs that you have, the uh, more efficient, the faster the phone can process in real time. So if you have a smaller RAM, you will see that your if, if you have too many apps open at the same time, or if you the apps that you're opening is very heavy, then you will, your phone will hang, right? So the bigger the RAMs, the better it is. The bigger the ROMs, the more files that you can store or the more apps that you can have. So again, each phones are not created equal. And of course, each phone has its own battery power, right? Nowadays, you can find 5,000 mAh or even 6,000 mAh. So the bigger the numbers, that means the longer the lifetime of the battery. And of course, each of the component built inside your phone will also use that battery. So depending on the processor type, depending on the screen that you use, depending on what you have on, whether your Bluetooth is on, your Wi-Fi is on, and so on, it will actually drain out your battery, right? So it also depends on, that's why, again, as I stress, um, not all uh, phones are created equal. So that's why different brands may have different prices and different ranges, uh, different demands, etc. right? So once the, you make a call, the data itself will be converted into radio signals and it will be transmitted through the antenna. 
in the olden days, you can see the antenna popping out. Something uh, like this is a big antenna that is coming out from the phone. But nowadays, you will notice that most of the antennas are built inside the phone and you don't even see it. Now, the, the technology for antennas include micro strip antennas, uh, circular antenna, coil antenna, for example, is built inside your phone and you don't even see it. Right? You don't even notice there is an antenna inside this phone, right? which will actually transmit the radio signals and also the re receiving the radio signals from the base stations. Okay. So mobile phone nowadays is no longer for voice only. So the, looking back at the evolution of mobile technology, you see that at the beginning, mobile phone was just for making calls, just for voice uh, communication. But with the enhancement of internet, with the advancement of the technology that we have, now mobile phones work more than just for voice. It's used for transmitting data, and you have uh, all sorts of apps in your phone that is using data, okay? So for the activity, I've already shared, uh, next part, we'll be looking at the activity using an Android apps. Uh, I will show a video here, right? So I, I've already put it in the comments uh, in the, uh, if you notice, if you're using YouTube Live, um, I already put it in the comment earlier, right? There are many apps that you can download um, and you can use to study about mobile um, or your cellular surrounding. Um, this is an example of apps that you can find uh, in Android phone, yeah? uh, for Android. Uh, since I'm using Android, I, I, I'm a bit biased towards Android phones, right? So if you have an Android phone, you can download, like for example, uh, Network Cell Info Light. You can look at the Net Monitor. Uh, you can do a Best Signal, um, the Best Signal, right? And then there's a, a few more Net Analyzer uh, coverage, right? Uh, some is actually for Wi-Fi alone. Wi-Fi Analyzer Set Dish Pointer is for satellite. Wi-Fi analyzer is also for Wi-Fi, right? So let's look at one example, all right? You can try this at home, yeah, don't worry. Uh, but of course, get your if you don't use your own phone, you use your, your parents' phone, please get the permission from your parents to install any of these apps or else they will be surprised to see such apps on their phone, right? Uh, let's look at an example of a network uh, cell info light. So this is one of the popular ones that I, I really like to use. Okay, so if you click on Network Cell Info Light, it will open up like this. So you will notice that this is an example of how the Network uh, Cell Info Light works. Yeah, I have um, two SIM cards on my phone. Nowadays, you will find that most phones are coming with a dual SIM card. So you can use uh, two companies, uh, two different companies uh, or two different SIM cards on the same phone. So in this example, I'm using Unify Mobile, right? And Unify Mobile is use, uh, showing me LTE. So LTE is a fourth generation. So you can refer to my earlier slides, 4G. So LTE is a type of 4G, it's a 4G LTE, right? So if I can go back to my earlier slides, on top of your phone, you will see this bar, right? On top of the bar, uh, on top of your phone, you will see all these bars, right? If there is nothing at all, then you are not getting any radio signals from the base station. So you're probably out of the coverage of the base stations. When you see one bar, there's a slightly bigger um, signal. There is a signal, but maybe not too strong. Uh, two bars, three bars, and of course, if you go higher, you, you, you go closer to the base stations, your signal will be stronger. So the numbers or the letters that were shown there, E is for edge, that is a 2G system. H is for HSDPA, which is the 3G system. Uh, G is for GPRS, is also a 2G uh, system, yeah, GPRS. 
Then LTE and 4G is both are for 4G systems. Sometimes is you will see it as 4G LTE, right? Uh, 4G, and of course later on in the future you will even have 5G, right? So this is showing you what is the current technology that your phone is connected to, right? And sometimes you will also see if you subscribe to Unify Mobile, for example you will get what is called VOLTE, is voice over LTE. So let me play this again. Okay, so it is showing the signal strength of your signals at the moment. So for example, when I play this, it is showing nine, minus 98 dBm, um, and the other one is minus 121 dBm. So you will see that in my home, this is, uh, sorry, this is the signals over at my house. So the strength of L, uh, the LTE signals is much stronger compared to the second signals that I'm subscribing to. I don't want to mention which company. <laughs> um, so the first company is Unify Mobile. It's much stronger. So at my house, your house may be different. So you may try and, and download this and you can see, oh, okay, my house is actually getting um, the, uh, a much stronger signal. This can also give you the way to describe or subscribe which company is suitable for my area. So different areas will have different coverage because the base stations that you are connected to or the base stations that is closer to you might be different. So using this same application, you can also check the speed, uh, uh, the download speed I was using a, a speed download. So it can test your download speed, right? Uh, you can test the download and also the upload speed. Again, you can test how fast is your uh, service provider giving you, right? Um, again, I didn't have time to uh, play on this, but you can try it on your own, right? And the next part, you can also see the raw signals. And as you can see, as I'm scrolling up and down, my phone is actually connected to more than one base station. Remember, there are a few base stations very close to me. There is one that I'm connected to, but I can also listen to the other base stations. I can also see the base stations surrounding my area. So you, can, you know where my house is now. And then you can also find out more details of your services. For example, in this case, you can also find what is my operator, what is my operator ID number, and you will see here MCC502 and MNC153. That is the base station that I'm connected to. Yeah. So the SIM state is ready, it's in service, but I'm not roaming because I'm actually in my home area. So go ahead and download some of these apps and you can try it out on your own. It's quite fun to do. And I think it is something that you can do during your free time. I'm sure you have a lot of free time during the school holidays. So you can play around with some of these apps and you can learn, oh, now I know where my base station is or how strong my signal is, how much data am I downloading? And you can complain to your service providers as well, right? If it is not up to your standard. So the next question comes in is that, is my phone secured? Right? Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are worried. Uh, oh, okay. Um, is it okay if I, if I use online banking in your, uh, using my phone? Um, is it secure enough? Well, mobile phone has come with a few security levels. Of course, at the user point of view, you can always set your password on your phone so that no one else can actually come into your phone. But the phone itself, the signal that is coming out from your phone is actually encrypted. Because of the uh, good thing about crypt, uh, digital uh, communications is that you can actually encrypt the signals. It is, um, uh, what do you call it? You can use encryption and you can use cryptography to encrypt the signals where even when people listen to it, they won't be able to decrypt that is in the secret code or in the secret language that don't, they don't even know. Another, there is a lot of features in mobile phone that they already embed, like public key, private key, 
Um, you have a SIM card which is unique to yourself. Uh, you have uh, your identity he is hidden and so on. So people don't really know where you are or your communication is very much secure. Another question that you, I get a lot um, uh, during uh, for mobile phones is, is there any health concern for mobile phones? If you go and search around, people are complaining, oh, I got headache um, um, when my house is very close to the base stations. I got headache when I use my phone for too long. Uh, it's a big headache. Of course, nothing is safe. Um, if you look at technology, everything has to be used at um, an average pace. That means um, there is a limit to what you can use. That's why even for the radio signals, there is a limitation that is set by the government. MCMC already limited the radio that can be transmitted from any, or they have regulated that any base stations can only transmit up to a certain level of power, not too high. So based on the World Health Organization, the radio signals are harmless. They are basically using a non-ionization radio frequency band. And this is not like X-ray that you use to, to uh, scan your body because X-ray is using a very, very, very high frequency that is very far from the radio that you use for mobile phones. So mobile phones are not um, really problematic, but some people may have other effects, like for example, maybe due to the stress, uh, like for example, when you are staring at the mobile phone for too long, um, the screen itself, uh, due to the Blu-ray light, et cetera, can actually cause you headaches. Uh, when you use your phone, like for example, that's why people um, even prefer to use uh, headphones or headsets rather than putting your phones very close to your ear, not because it's radiating, uh, it's creating some uh, radio, uh, what do you call it, uh, nuclear radiations or anything like that that will change your cells, but it's the heat that is coming from your phone because it's almost like any other processes is going to produce heat. Is using battery and is processing. So there will be some heat coming out from your phone as well. So this may also cause problems to your body. So if you use mobile phones, um, and, and mobile phone is just like any other devices. Uh, it doesn't have its brain on its own. It's the user that decide whether you want to use it for a good thing or whether they want you use it for a bad thing. It's like a knife. Knife is good when you use it for uh, when you use it in the kitchen to cut your food or anything, but knife can also be uh, harmful. So uh, it depends on the end user itself. And again, mobile phones are not living thing. They don't have their, a brain on their own. So it's the user that actually use the phones, right? And it's up to the user. So hopefully what I have talked about today about the mobile phone and you within this one hour has given you some insights of what mobile phone or how mobile phone works, right? Mobile phone is actually just a small portion of technology that we have in telecommunication. It's only a small portion, right? There are so many other interesting things in telecommunication. And you, as you know, and, uh, and as everybody knows, telecommunication industry is evolving. You will see a lot of people are using devices and definitely with it, I don't think or, or we don't see any cooling down for uh, mobile technology as I show you in the earlier slides. The number of subscribers keep on increasing for mobile technology. And in the future for 5G, for example, there will be internet of things that will be using up this mobile technology. And people are talking about autonomous cars. People are talking about uh, smart cities. Um, a smart healthcare, etc. So the technology is evolving and you never know some of the um, ad hoc things or things that are unexpected, like the pandemic itself has actually give advantage to the telecommunication industry where you look at the demand for telecommunication has actually increased, right? Uh, although some industries are affected by MCOs, I think the telecommunication industries are enjoying the MCOs because now everybody have to stay at home. Everybody is doing like, for example, yourself, you have to use uh, homes, uh, you have to use mobile phones and your technology for your homeschooling, um, uh, doing your PDPR at home, right? Uh, so you have to learn at home using these devices. 
So a lot of people are taking advantage and are actually forced. Like when you go around, you have to take your mobile phones nowadays. Uh, even old folks know how to use QR code. Uh, if QR code was alien about two years ago, now QR code is almost like uh, something very common. And my sejahtera is uh, something that is almost like your my card that you cannot live in, live without. Right. So there's a, a lot of things that you can learn. Um, and if you want to know more, um, you can actually enroll in our Bachelor of Engineering Electronics, majoring in telecommunication, where in this program, we actually taught you a lot of the new things um, that is coming out, especially in 5G. For example, we have the mobile broadband, massive IoT, uh, massive critical IoT. Probably some of this will be alien to you now. But if you go through the degree program, it definitely will give you an insight to what's coming up in the future. There's a lot of interesting things in engineering. Um, and engineering is fun. Yeah? It's not uh, a nerdy or, or uh, it's not static at all. Right? So there's so many things to learn. So hopefully, uh, this kind of program have given you some insights. Um, if you want to scan your attendance, you can scan the QR code. And I've also shared the link with you earlier. Uh, OK, so let me uh, check the chat box if there is any question. Uh, so far, there is no question on YouTube Live. Uh, there's also no questions, I believe, in the comment sections um, in the Facebook Live. OK. So hopefully everybody can understand this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and um, if you need any more information, there's always um, the MMUFOE uh, Facebook page. You can always text us in on the F F uh, MMUFOE page, or you can go to our MMU Engineering Instagram as well. All right. So thank you once again. I hope everybody have a, a good day ahead. Um, stay safe. Uh, and then stay at home right? and enjoy your holidays uh, before you start your PDPR again in another two weeks' time. Right? Okay, thank you, everyone. Bye.